Geeks gave us, we got a fantastic show for you today. Kickboxer and Bloodsport filmmaker Mark DeSalle is going to be right here telling us stories from the set, stories about Van Damme, stories about kickboxing, stories about just filmmaking. I'm super, super excited about this one. Uh, let's get to it then. It's all coming at you on a brand new Geekscape. Hey, Geekscapists, welcome to a brand new Geekscape podcast. I'm Jonathan London, your host. That's what the theme song says. And we'll be talking movies, video, comics, podcasting, all that stuff uh, on Geekscape. But we've got a special episode today. We've got filmmaker Mark DeSalle here to talk about making Bloodsport and Kickboxer. And uh, y'all are no strangers to those movies. If you've been watching Geekscape on the feed or since we started in 2006, because I've pretty much on most of the episodes had this giant Van Damme kickboxer poster behind me. And we got a story about how that led to this episode. Um, but speaking about our long 15 year history here on Geekscape, we actually have a huge, very cool event coming up on December 17th. I want to start the show off with having you circle your calendars and put yourselves in front of the computer for the entire day because we're doing a 15 hour charity live stream for Big Brothers Big Sisters. Matt Kelly has been really working hard on this thing and it's gonna be a celebration. Almost all of our podcasts are involved, if not all of them. There's gonna be live music. There's gonna be all sorts of cool stuff. And again, all of this is to raise money for Big Brothers Big Sisters. Uh, we did the, the charity stream last year and it was so much fun. It was there were tons of surprises. There were like variety shows and some of the normal podcasts. And then some of the normal podcasts were doing really weird stuff like variety shows or contests or games. We did a role playing game online. It was weird. It was fun. I think everybody was excited about it. Big Brothers, Big Sisters loved it. We're going to come back bigger this year. So please circle December 17th on the calendar. If you're in Los Angeles, though, here's a special surprise I'm announcing for the first time right now. There's going to be a live show. To celebrate 15 years of Geekscape, we're doing Geekscape Live in a theater here in Los Angeles. Details are coming out this week, and we're actually co-headlining that show with our good longtime friend, Scott Kloppenstein, and his Littlest Man Band um, team of players. His, his band is going to be joining us. There's going to be an hour of Geekscape on stage with guests, some comedy, well, why would we start now? Uh, and all sorts of fun stuff. Definitely some music. Katie will be there. And then that'll be followed by an hour of Scott and his band. And if it goes well, maybe we'll keep doing some live shows. If you're not in Los Angeles, though, you're in luck. You can stream it. So it'll be the last hour of that charity stream that Matt Kelly has been putting together. Um, and it's going to be a blast. And we're going to be celebrating 15 years. We're going to be doing some charity. Um, and you know what? We wouldn't have gotten there without y'all. So really, really appreciate it. Share Geekscape with your friends. This is all about making something positive, right? And uh, sharing our, our enthusiasm for all the geek culture and all the popular culture. So uh, with that being said, let's share our enthusiasm for something that you know I've loved for a very long time. These are cult movies, Bloodsport and Kickboxer. You know how much I love the Van Damme films. Um, so it's an honor to have my uh, friend Mark Tassal on here. And uh, he's joining me on the show right now. Mark, how are you, buddy? I'm great. Nice to nice to see you, Jonathan. He's, he leaned forward, lean forward, so the kids can get a good look at there's Mark. There's what you know. You're a filmmaker. We got to fill the frame, right? We got to get a good know, composition. Sorry, I was leaning back. You know, <laughs> hey, the fact that this is a geek skate. Uh, you know, does that mean I'm a geek now? So just, I just want to have that understanding. Well, we're going to discuss this because you had to get into filmmaking somehow. And we'll discuss like, you know, what movies influenced you growing up, what you're enthusiastic about. But to tell the Geekscape is how you came on the show. Um, a lot of them don't know that I myself have a superhero like Alter Ego, where by day I'm sometimes a college professor. And during the <laughs> pandemic, I had to play college professor on Zoom. And Geekscape is to, to just kind of tell you how Mark got on the show. I um, was teaching a class on Zoom during the pandemic, 
And as I'm teaching, one of the students uh, said, oh, hold on, hold on, teach. Is that a kickboxer poster behind you? And I said, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I'm immediately the coolest teacher because they probably have something they're trying to impress the students with. So maybe some French New Wave poster or something that's going to give them filmmaker cred. I've got the Van Damme kickboxer poster. All right. Let's remember that. I don't need any of the frou-frou filmmaker stuff. I know what I like. And this student said, oh, yeah, my dad made that movie. <laughs> um, I think that was just him trying to. I, I was like, this kid's just trying to get an A. There's no way. <laughs> there's no way. I did my IMDb research. And yes, his father did direct Kickboxer. Um, so we connected and I said, Hey, let's, let's get Mark on the show and let's talk blood sport and kickboxer. <laughs> That's how it happened. That, that, and, and, that, and Mark's a great student. Mark jr. Is a great student. He was a really good student. Yeah. He, he loved your class by the way. And, uh, it was so funny when he was in your class and then all of a sudden he came down and he said, and he told me the story, what, what happened? He said, would you mind coming up? And that's when I walked oh, up yeah. and I waved to you. Yes. You know. I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> like the filmmaker behind movies that my brothers and I watched repeatedly, <laughs> repeatedly. I mean, we wore out the VHS on those. Yes. Things. Yes. So um, that's, that's dating us, right? Yeah. That, but, before DVD. Yeah. Before I, streaming. I, I still have my VHSs of Kickboxer and Bloodsport. Do you really? Um, wow. Yeah. Because, it, you know, in college, I, you know, DVDs were just starting to come out, really become like DVD players were still pretty expensive when I was starting out in college. So we would just watch like that or the Sonny Chiba movies or whatever. We just watch all the Kung Fu movies over and over again. Um, and, you know, the Van Damme ones were always my favorite. Uh, I, there's just something about his personality, um, the accent, you know, um, something comedic about him. And if you watch like The Last Mercenary, the movie that he just put out on you on uh on netflix like it's clear that he has a sense of humor at this point at least maybe he didn't mm -hmm. then but um he, he's a little bit of a cult figure around geekscape so we definitely wanted to talk to you about that but yes uh when we were talking about the charity beforehand of big brothers big sisters you said you had a big brothers big sisters story you know it's funny i mean if it wasn't for big brothers i don't know if blood sport would have been made and that's kind of a a weird connection to make but uh I actually, when I lived in LA, I was in the Big Brother program. And uh, they gave me this kid, uh, which they thought it was a good ch a challenge, this kid named Rico, who was, uh, you know, his father didn't have a father. His mother was raising him and he used to break dance for money on in Santa Monica. So anyway, I became his big brother and he loved ninjas. And, and, and I, let me try and shorten the story somewhat. But when I was first looking to do movies, I, when I was in L.A., I said, OK, first thing I got to do is find a script. And uh, and I, you know, reached out to writers and they sent me scripts. And and this one this one writer, Sheldon Lettich, I, I liked his writing, but what he sent me, I, I didn't resonate with. So he called me one time and he said, hey, how would you like to meet a real ninja? I, and I said, uh, uh, oh, you know what? I said, if I can bring my little brother with me, then absolutely I would do that because he loved ninjas. And that's when he introduced me to Frank Dukes. And then Frank Dukes told me the story about fighting in the Kumite. And uh, and I engaged the writer and said, let's write this script. This is the movie I want to do. Because I was a big Bruce Lee fan, you know. But anyway, yeah. that that's how it came to be that I met Frank Dukes. It was because of the fact that I was a big brother and I was doing it for my little brother. So that's insane. Isn't that insane? I know it's, that's calm. That's good karma though. Right. You know, it's, yeah, you know, I mean, it's serendipitous that, that it was Frank Dukes that he had that, that story. Um, there have been rumors that like, that is a story true. How much of that story is true with that story that led to blood sport and this and that, I don't know yeah. how much you illuminated on that and making the movie. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know if it was true. What Frank told me is about he used to fight in these underground fights that happened every five years. And, uh, you know, then we just uh, had the writers, you know, write the story and uh, brought in additional writers. And anyway, it's it was one of those things that everything happens for a reason. And, uh, you know, that was my first movie. Uh, I, I remember when the, the film was released 
and I and I was living in LA and I went to it was on Hollywood Boulevard the, the it was the the fourplex there and and I remember opening night again this is my first movie so I didn't know people going to like it hate it whatever and uh, and I remember there was a long line and but you didn't know what movie they were waiting for so I, I remember asking the last person in line I said you know what are you what are you going to see and he said Bloodsport and I went yes. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. It was, it was, it was fun. And I got to tell you, the, yeah, go ahead. No, no, uh, you got to tell me what I was going to ask you. Your no, origin, the, the but we'll blood, get to that. The blood sport fans are just incredible. You know, it was one of those. It became like a cult picture. I mean, it was just, uh, you know, it was, it was done for like two million dollars. It was, you know, it was a low budget, you know, but, uh, but it had heart. You know, it had Van Damme as a his first starring role, and. Uh, uh, we had like a lot of fun. I went looking for Bolo Young because because I shot it in Hong Kong, and uh, and like I said, Bruce Lee was yeah. Bruce you're an Lee Internet was, Dragon fan, yeah. Yeah, and and then I said, oh Bolo, oh I gotta find him, you know, because I wanted it to be a menacing opponent, you know, for Van Damme, and and it all worked out. And it's amazing, uh, Bolo is uh, he's so gentle in real life. He's a singer. I mean, you what? don't expect yes. You don't expect him to sing, you know, but he's kind of a singer. And I said, it's like, it blows your mind sometimes that, but when the camera starts, he's in a different persona, you know, so. Oh, uh, he's, I, oh, I didn't even tell you this. One of the music video that I shot in 2004, I based loosely on a, on Bloodsport. It was a, it was a, the, oh, really? the, whole prim, the, the way I pitched it to the band was, a guy enters a blood sport to impress his girlfriend. <laughs> and I had everything down to the bad guy. Look at the, the good guy and go, it's, it clenches fist in his face. Like Bolo Young does when he's got Jack, when he's got Jackson's bandana and exactly. he's like, you're next. Mm -hmm. That whole thing. Um, yeah. The band, the, the band was called Houston calls and I did a, a wow. video for them. And I totally forgot that I made that video until just now talking to you about Bolo Young, who the stories that I hear about Bolo Young is, today in LA, he now lives, um, I think he lives in like South Pasadena or that kind of area. And he and his, and his son looks identical to him. But if you go to the right gym, whatever gym they're members of, you just see them like hanging out at the gym. They both are ripped still. Um, and they, and he looks just like his dad. Uh, the first time I saw him was enter the dragon. And yeah. that's just such an incredible movie. Um, t that's one of your influences. Tell me about like where you grew up and like what got you into making movies. So uh, I grew up in New York. You can probably tell from I still have my <laughs> accent, you know, uh, you know, born and raised in New York City. And uh, in, in my uh, late 20s, I started as a, off as a public accountant. Um, and uh, and I moved to uh, moved to L.A. And, uh, you know, just after being a beach bum for a couple of years, I said, oh, it's time to it's time to start to do something. You know, when I was in New York, I, I got influenced into the entertainment industry because I was with a company that we used to produce live shows across the United States. Um, you know, mostly it was uh, uh, rock stars, you know, or Stevie Wonder or Leon Russell, people like that. So uh, and uh, and then when I moved out, uh, when I went to visit a friend in L.A., I fell in love with Marina Del Rey in California. And I said, I'm going to go live there. And it but by that point, you were already a film fan. Like you said, you're a fan I was of Bruce a film Lee. Fan. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was always a film fan, you know. So, so, so what were like the movies that you movies. watched and you said, hey, this is pretty awesome. I don't think I'm ever going to be involved in them, but I have an appreciation for film as a fan. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I guess, moving into L.A. and being in the vicinity of that of those kind of people and meeting some of them, you made your way in. But what were the, some of those early movies that you're like, okay, I, I'm starting to get a little bit of the language. I'm starting to get a little bit of the appreciation for this art form. You know, I, I think, uh, well, like I said, the Bruce Lee phenomena, I, and I always wanted to say, gee, I'd love to do an American version of like a martial art movie, because most of them were from overseas, from Hong Kong. Um, and but but I liked you know the Godfather. I mean you know Terminator. I mean I I loved uh, I loved action movies uh, specifically. Uh, so they always appealed to me, and uh, and it was something I always felt that uh, I wanted to do. I didn't go to film school. You know um, I, I really the first thing I made was uh, was a, a video called Imagination Library. It was just a lady telling stories. You know to a bunch of kids and. Uh, 
that was the only thing I did before Bloodsport. What was that video and how'd that come about? So you're a beach bum. You're out here. Yeah. <laughs> you left the accounting behind. Yes. Um, and at this point, you're I'm guessing you're in your early mid twenties and you're like, okay, we gotta yes. I gotta I gotta start figuring out what this looks like. Yeah. I, I gotta I start putting this together. And, and I swear to God, I said, Oh, I'm in LA, I might as well make movies. That's, and this you know. first one, like, what is that? This this it was just it was just something that I got my feet wet with that that that, that I you know, that I directed, it was this lady who just was a wonderful storyteller. And I said, oh, this would be great for kids. And uh, so we just filmed her talk, telling these stories to a bunch of kids. And, you know, we put in some backdrops of things that pertain to, to the story. But uh, it was just one of those things. I don't think it ever got distributed, but uh, it was the, the first thing I made. And I said, oh, I, I like this format. I, I just like working with the people, filming it and doing the editing, the post. I mean, all the, all the things that go with filmmaking, I have my experience with, or I had a taste of it, you know, before. And, uh, and you were doing that. So you had to put that whole thing together, I'm guessing. I don't know, uh, you know. Yeah. To, yeah, like that, like for, from soup to nuts, that the whole thing was your deal. Yes. And so getting into starting to put the movies together for with the Van Damme films, how do you then make Bloodsport? Was this something that came out of his experience with Canon Films? Was there still a, a revenue well, of that whole Going Globus thing it, going on? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, so when I when we got the script done for Bloodsport, um, you know, so I had a Was Van Damme even involved? He was involved. No, no He was not no. involved. Okay, you were no, like, I'm going to make point. my own kind of Bruce Lee movie. Yes. This is what it's going to be. It's, uh, and, it's Frank Dukes' movie. Right, and then I submitted it to Canon at the time you know, to do foreign sales. I was figuring, I figured I had to finance the movie, you know, never financed the movie before, but I took a company public, you know, when I was 25, which was the one that did the live shows. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew business from New York. So that, which was helpful. Uh, but still, okay. So I sent them the script. I sent Canon the script to do foreign sales and they liked it so much. They said, Hey, we'd like to finance the whole project and do domestic and international. I said, okay, if you twist my arm, you know, so, so <laughs> you know, and then uh, Menachem uh, at the time, uh, he was, uh, you know, uh, Menachem Golan and, yeah. and Yoram Globus. I mean, they, they owned Canon. And uh, uh, he told me about this Van Dam kid that he saw and uh, he introduced me to him. And then I met with, with Jean-Claude. Now I'm 6'3". And Jean Claude's about five seven, five seven and a half maybe. And when I first met him, he came over to me and he said, "Don't move." I said, "Okay." And then he proceeded to do this helicopter kick over my head, gracefully land and smile. And I said, "Okay, I love you. You know, you're the, you're my star." You know, so that that's he was driving limousines at the time, uh, wow. trying to get into the film industry. So and uh, this is still, I mean, because you hear the Van Damme stories of his early career, like obviously like we've seen uh, No Retreat, No Surrender, where he played the villain. Mm -hmm. the, they call it White Tiger, I think, in, in Europe. Right, you, right. You, you have the, the, the stories about him being on the Predator for all of like a week or something in the early, well, the early version of the Predator with like the yeah. Mantis looking Yeah, yeah, you know, that, 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 that's a funny story too, because... Uh, I remember before Bloods. Now this is this was going to be a big picture for Van Damme. It's his first mm -hmm. starring role, Bloodsport. He was very excited about it, uh, and he was telling me he was offered to do the this Predator. Just but you wouldn't see his face. He was going to be the Predator, but uh, yeah, he was only there for a week because they wanted him. Because I told him, I said, now be careful. I said, Bloodsport's your shot, you know. And uh, when they asked him to do things that he thought were dangerous, he said, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to risk it. So that's kind of why he was only on the set for a week. And if you Geekscape is look up this early version of the Predator, it did not look like the modern Predator that we that we saw in the it didn't look like the one that we ended up with the in the John McTiernan film. Right, this, right. this thing looked like this weird mantis thing. And I yeah. believe he had to walk on some form of stilts as well, which would only make whatever he was doing even more dangerous. Yeah. And I remember they wanted him to jump from a tree and, and he said, well, what are you crazy? You know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to get hurt. I got a big picture to do. So, uh, so anyway, that was kind of, uh, you know, what led to that. So and this is post cyborg though, correct? The, the no. Bloodsport one was no. okay. So he did cyborg after yes. Bloodsport. Yes. 
Wow. Plus, what was his for outside of the one part he had in No Retreat, No Surrender? You know, Bloodsport was his big picture. And break into starring role. Break into Electric Boogaloo, too. I believe <laughs> yeah. he played a background. <laughs> I think it was a, a dancer. I think it, it, like a blink a miss it role in that one. Um, we we'll talk was... about dancing. He loved. He Jean Claude loved dancing. I remember after Bloodsport, you know, we were at a party and I saw him dance, and I said, you know what? I said, you're a real good dancer. We got to put that in the next movie. And that's why, and that's why in Kickboxer, which was the next movie we did together, you know, we had that dancing scene. You know, just that to was, showcase uh, Van Damme's. And now yeah, it's like a meme. Exactly. Now that, that dance that he does yes. is a total meme. Yeah. And it's amazing. Why are they laughing at me? <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. I mean, that's I I I can quote a lot of both of these films, and I won't do it. Because out of respect, you don't. I mean, you don't want to see the bad acting. But um, that scene, the dancing scene, seems like one that comes completely out of like left field. And I think that you don't see you. You, didn't, you wouldn't get like Sylvester so Stallone had his own kind of humor, but it was a little bit of like a like a rebel humor. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Arnold had a little bit of like a wink wink humor that he knew this is an action movie. He's an action star. I don't know if Steven Seagal had any humor. <laughs> but 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 John Claude had a humor that just seemed like he, he still does. I mean, this last mercenary movie that he has on Netflix right now yeah. is is just a comedy. It's more a comedy than an action movie. It's 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 yes. loud. Um, is he always a funny dude? Oh, I mean, we 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 laughed a lot. Okay, we had a lot of fun together. You know, yes, he he loves he loves laughter. He loves comedy and. Uh, you know, so it's one of his traits that that he has. You know. And how did he get access to the Golan Globus crew? Because I mean, there's documentaries about Golan Globus. There's some really great documentaries about yeah. that whole era. Oh I'm yeah, fascinated I mean, by it. yeah, and and I, I don't know if it was uh, Van Dam like sending him something or you know, and I really don't recall how. I just remember when I said, "Check this, check this kid out." You know, this was after they said they were going to do Bloodsport, which is even before Van Damme was confirmed just to come on board. So they just liked the script a lot. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't, I don't remember how he got to him or whether it was just somebody mentioned it to him. He, he just, I remember him telling me, check this kid out, you know, for a potential. And then the Forrest Whitaker stuff. Like a oh, Forrest gotta, Whitaker. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was like, uh, yeah, it was during casting. That mm -hmm. Forrest Whitaker came in and I said, yeah, I said, I, I like him a lot. And I, I, you know, this is early on in his career as well. I think he did one other movie at the time. Uh, uh, Fast Times at Richmond High. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like right. he was the football player in Fast Times at Richmond yeah. High. And yeah. I think the next time I see him in like a starring role was Kickboxer uh, <laughs> or Blood's Blood, no, Blood, Blood, Blood Sport. Blood Sport. Yeah. yeah. And then, you you know, there's uh, there are a lot of good people that we'd seen from the 80s here, like Donald Gibb. Like Donald Gibb, oh, yeah. you really only you only really know him from Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> like, had you seen him in Revenge of the Nerds prior to then putting him in yes. Bloodsport? Yes. But I remember him coming in during casting, and uh, you know, I fell in love with Don. And uh, you know, he he had all these biker shirts. And the funniest thing is, in Hong Kong, it, Don Gibb is like six six. I'm six three. The two of us walking down the street. A lot of people are shorter in Hong Kong. I mean, we stood out a lot. That's yeah, they think sure, of basketball. You know? <laughs> they think there's a basketball team in town. They, think I mean, you, really? they, they probably think you're the Washington Generals and the Globetrotters are going to yeah. do an exhibition or something. Yeah. So, but, so, so you you cast him, and then this. But some of my favorite scenes are like the ones. Uh, how much of this was ad lib stuff? Like, I'm not your pal, dick face, oh, and yes. stuff like that. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, I can quote the movie. We can keep going. But um, how much so this stuff was ad libbed? How much of this stuff was in the original script? What's the process yeah. of working with these actors? How much? Yeah, I mean, like with any film, you know, I love I love the ad libs. I love the improvisations that happen, you know, in the moment. You know, that happens all the time. And some of them, some of them work and some of them don't, you know, but uh, I always encourage uh, all the actors that I work with, you know, to come up with stuff or, you know, to discuss a scene. And, and I'm co we're constantly changing dialogue. I mean, you know, up until you shoot, every scene you know the script is a, a living thing that just goes through that evolution uh mm -hmm. no matter what it's, you know so uh which i love uh, i love that fact you know that you could always change it based on what happens um 
in uh, in my I don't know if you're familiar with the Notorious Nick was a movie I did that was released last month by Lionsgate. No. Oh, we got to watch that. Yeah. What's the story uh, on that one? It stars. Uh, it's a it's a true story. Uh, it's about this guy Nick Newell. He became uh, an MMA champion and he was born with one arm. Great inspirational story. I remember. Uh, I remember talking to him, and of course, Bloodsport was his favorite movie. So he said, I, "Mark, I really would like you to do my movie." You know, so it was one wow. of those things that happened. But uh, uh, I forget what I was saying. Oh, yeah. So during the making of that movie, we had Kevin Pollack, you know, for a couple of days, and and he had, and it was an extra couple of hours. And I remember writing a scene, you know, that that I acted with him in because we had an extra couple of hours. You yeah, know, why so not? That's, uh, you know, it's, it's the barbershop scene in Notorious Nick. So when you see you the movie, you know, when you see the movie, you'll 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 understand what I mean. And the movie came out last month, and it's available August. In, in, it came out August. Yeah, it came out in August, and there's like on Netflix or is it streaming or Amazon it's, for it's, sure. It's streaming. You know, it's uh, it's it's uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you could from any Apple or any of your cable stations that you you know demand. You know, uh, pay on demand. That's it's available. So, you wanted to be an actor first. I'm hearing no, no. Like how? No, you end up being, no. I didn't want I'd to be. Your, an... I see your IMDb, and I'm like, what's this dude putting himself in front of the camera for? You know, he must well, have started as an actor because you uh, know that transition, right? No, no, definitely. You did not. the transition in reverse. Usually, it's actors start for like first they're <laughs> actors. And then when they get older, they're like, oh, I don't know if the camera wants to point on my face. And then they become directors, right? Or maybe they've been told what to do too many times or they've been involved in too many bad movies. Then they become control freaks and then they become directors. You went opposite. You were like, I'm a director. Yeah, I'll put the camera on myself a few times. I, uh, You know what? And and it was one of those things. I did it for fun in Bloodsport. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the fact that the movie was a success, I said, oh, it's got to be because I was in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so I kept it up, you know, right. kind of like uh, Hitchcock, you know. So, but Notorious Nick, I, I actually had a couple of scenes that uh, were probably too long. But anyway, uh, it was it was just one of those things I did for fun. But know? Paul Verhoeven, I think, will do that too. Like you see Paul Verhoeven, like a, a Robocop, this and that. Like you know, they have fun just kind of throwing themselves in front of yeah. the camera. And I think you know, having made movies, that's something that just ha has to happen instinct, like anyway because like the, the set has only so many people there's only so many people you can afford to have on a set like and yeah, then right. if you need a body it's usually going to be somebody from the crew that you just throw in for the camera because you need a body but you know did you see have you seen death warrant that yes. was the third third film i i did with van dam well mm -hmm. i i'm i'm a, a prisoner cook and, and, and the only reason I bring this up because they, they, you know, blacked out some of my teeth and had this white hat on. And and uh, and when I came out on the set dressed like this, everybody just fell to the floor, you know, because they thought it was so hysterical, you know, that I would make myself up like this. So uh, but again, it's all about having fun. I like to have mm -hmm. fun on the set. You know, I like everybody to be loose and, you know, it's a ser they're serious times that, you know, everybody's got to work and do their effort, but you have to enjoy it, you know, and to me, I enjoy filmmaking. And that's, that's one of the things that inspires me. All well, the time. You're shooting in Hong Kong, but this is your first film. Yes. There's a lot of, there, well, there's a lot of, uh, what I was going to say was there's a lot of stuff that you're doing for the first time. You're yes. doing action, action choreography. I yes. think the movie's actually a pretty beautiful film. I actually think Kickboxer is a really beautiful film. Like, I think some of the sequences in Kickboxer are really like the the cinematography is actually beautiful, in some of the stuff that they have there in Thailand. Sorry, they're coming to arrest me. No, that's so okay. Oh shit! Right what we got? Five yeah, minutes? Okay. <laughs> nah, it's fine. Um, no, no, and so, uh, and then Bloodsport. Like, you have some. You actually have a pretty nice shot variation in Bloodsport from the wise to the close-ups this and that and they have fun sequences like the chase across the boats and right, right. there's a lot of humor in there um but again you're doing a lot of the stuff for the first time action choreography maybe working with a foreign language crew and I'm and I'm sure Hong Kong had some pretty great crew but like what were the challenges of putting this movie together again for a two million dollar budget a lot. The, the challenges were a lot. And I think, uh, you know, what's helped me a lot, I think, 
growing up in New York where you have to learn how to survive. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think I, I, I got my bullshit antennas when I was 12 years old, Hold on, you know, I think you, I think Mark to, froze to a little people. bit. But... <laughs> Am I frozen? Mark, you there? I'm here. Did he freeze for y'all? Cause he froze for me. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, there you go, Mark. We got you back. Yes, yeah, sir. No, no. I, I was just saying it's, uh, one of the things you learn growing up in New York is, uh, is confidence in, and, and, uh, you know, I never was afraid of taking a risk. You know, when I think about it now, I said, holy crap. I said, you know, I went to a foreign country and shot my first movie, you know, not knowing much, you know, just doing that one little video beforehand. So uh, so certainly was a challenge, but I, I didn't I didn't think anything of it at the time. I just uh, I just put my heart and soul into it. And, uh, is that an advantage? You think like sometimes filmmakers talk a little know. bit too much about the language, a little too much about the rules, and in a little bit. I think naivety has a lot. Not that you're, but you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, no, so no. I, I, not I, knowing I, I, what not to do, you're going to do things that just feel natural, and you're just, and it becomes a more organic story. I, I think a lot depends on the individual. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's an advantage or a disadvantage. You know, uh, uh, maybe for some people it may be, and for some people it's not. So uh, I just approached it with because I love movies. I, I look for every every casting member on that. Uh, the choreography that I, I worked on too it was just I wanted it to be good, you know. And as mm -hmm. and I look at it, and I and I approached it as a movie fan, and I think that that's that's one of the thing I said. What would I like to see? And, and that's what I did. So, um, so I think all those influences of, you know, the Bruce Lee movies was certainly helpful. Uh, and Van Damme was such a pleasure to work with, uh, with that. And, 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 I, and I think, you know, with Kickboxer, uh, because uh, when I, when we did Bloodsport, I had an option to do two other pictures with the Jean-Claude. And, uh, and it's funny how Kickboxer came out to be is that I was reading an article in the Wall Street Journal. And it was an article, you know, maybe this big. It talked about uh, Muay Thai fighting in 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 Bangkok, and uh, and that in the history of it, they used to use broken glass and resin on their fists. And I said, "Wow, that sounds cool." And then I wrote this story, Kickboxer, and uh, and then had to write a you know write the screenplay. But that that's kind of how it started, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just by noticing things. Um, or like going, you know, to see Frank Dukes and then and then all of a sudden a film is made, you know, reading an article, then a film is made. You know, uh, it was it was funny. Uh, the the blinding scene at the end of Bloodsport where he's blind, he's he throws the powder mm -hmm. in his face. Mm -hmm. Is that was that your equivalent of the um, fighting in the in the mirror sequence at the end of End of the Dragon where he can't see where the enemy is? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, it makes sense. It, it, it probably was an influence on yeah. me, and maybe not even knowing it, you know, subconsciously, I'm sure. In the Bruce Lee uh, movies, it always seemed like the villains would give themselves a cheap advantage at the end. Well, you're right. That, isn't that that's why you like to root for the hero, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, you want the bad guy to do as much bad things as possible so you can root for your hero. So that that's kind of the the approach that that we took. I wanted and, the villain to be met like Bolo is menacing looking, you know, and, you know. So when when uh, when he's blind, that sequence. Yes, uh, I got a I got a little clarification to do because I, I did a little research and I was like, this story that I was told years ago is a lie. When I first moved to L.A., I was a, a post runner for a, a TV um, movie, and the editor on that had edited some Van Damme movies that came after yours, and he claimed to have invented the Van Damme triple take where <laughs> blah, 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 he does the, yeah. the three, the three kicks in succession of the same move, but shot from either three angles or just re replayed three times. And I said like, that can't be right because the movies you made were released in 91, 92. Yes. And that is absolutely when he catches the, 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 the punch when he's blind in blood sport and then gives him the kicks to the ribs right. in three quick successions. You created the Van Damme triple take. Well, and, and it was and it was a collaboration. I was it was done in the editing room, uh, mm. and and Van Damme was, was participant in that as well. Um, you know, he was really uh, he wanted to be involved in every aspect of the film. He wanted to have his input, and I thought that was great. You know, and I encourage all actors to be that way. You know, and 
you know, but we tried it in the editing room, you know, like hitting one. I said, let's do it again. Let's do it again. And and it, it came to be in the editing room of Bloodsport that that was developed. Mm-hmm. So you were it, would, it didn't come out. You were you something was missing. Do you got to the point where you're like, no, like, yeah. like, like we're putting them down, like we're kicking them. Yeah, and no, it's cool, it's, but we need a little bit more. Well, oof. it's a, it's just a filmatic, uh, you know, tool. I mean, it's just, just to make give it more impact. You know that uh, to see it done three times, to see it done fast. Uh, you know, it just makes it more powerful. You know, and you'd see that in other movies, like other no, action films. You no, see that? I didn't. I had no. no I that's why I no. call it the Van Damme triple take because yeah. I don't think I don't think John Woo John Woo uses the slow mo, and he was working around that time. He's using the slow motion stuff pretty heavily, mm-hmm. but he wasn't using triple no. takes. Yeah, and no. you, ha- you know, or and then earlier would you have like. Uh, the, the the castle films and all these other you know these films of the eighties, um, well, Walter Hill is who I'm trying to talk about. Like you have those Walter Hill films, like he's not using triple takes either. Hmm. No, you it know? was developed in the in the editing room, and like I said, and and Van Dam was was one of the ones and the editor uh, and myself, and then it was done there. So all on a steam was, deck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what we just tried it. Price. We said, oh, let's let's try it, and and then we liked it. So. <laughs> that's crazy yeah yeah and so, so kickboxer you did not direct kickboxer did yes you? i did i did oh you did it. oh i have it here i have it here you uh, with yeah. david worth how, yeah. how much did you share david, with pro, yeah with david, david uh, was my dp in okay Bloodsport. okay and, I, and, and he he was looking to get a directing credit and uh we said we'd do it together uh and uh so that that's how that came to be that's crazy gracious because yes and I think it can. Only, I think the the advantage was that y'all were working again on an independent level, because on a non-independent level, suddenly like people get involved and they say, "Wait, wait, 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 wait!" The suits get involved and they're like, "No, uh, this is going to look nasty down the line. We really have to delineate this." But by this point, I'm guessing y'all are really friends and creative collaborators. You trusted each other. You had yes. a shorthand. We did, you know. Hey, look, when I when I'm not directing and, I, and when I'm producing, I'm in every sh- I'm in every shot anyway. You know, I'm mm-hmm. not one of those producers that, you know, is in an office. Uh, I'm I'm on the set making sure every shot in my, you know, video screen is, is works. And especially with fights that you got to make sure that the hits look real. Otherwise, you know, uh, that's not going to work. Right. So. Uh, so, yeah, I, I I submerge myself when I'm making a movie into the film. And I had you. I had it flipped. I had it flipped. Uh, of course, Kickboxer is the one you directed because that's the one that Mark pointed out yeah, as yeah, the giant so poster yeah, behind me and yeah. said, "My dad directed that movie, <laughs> um, Bloodsport." You produced, and as you're yeah. putting the production, yes. you get you kind of got your feet wet with with uh, Bloodsport. But again, like you said, you're in every shot. There's, you know, and if you're doing an independent film, it's really all hands on deck. Yeah, you know. Well, and I and I put a lot of shots into Bloodsport that uh, uh, that I created. So. Um, you know, so it was. It's it really started with Bloodsport. I was, you know, uh, I did as much as I could on that. But I think on Kickbox, I think my name's on the poster like four times. It's like it's oh. embarrassing when I was when somebody when somebody told me that. I said because I did the story. I did the. It was a Mark to Self production. It was a Mark to Self producer, Mark to Self director, and story. So it was like, uh, oh, I guess that's enough for. <laughs> you know what Robert Rodriguez does? Robert Rodriguez just makes people up. <laughs> Supposedly, because you know he's all like indie with his, you know, troublemaker studios, and he likes he likes to shoot his own films. He likes to cut his own films. He likes to write and direct his own films. And Robert Rodriguez, when I talked to him years ago, he said, "Yeah, I just after a while, it, it, your name comes up so many times, you just have to start making up names to make it look like your film was more expensive than it was, <laughs> because if it looks like one person is doing a lot of the jobs, they'll when you." when you sell to a distributor, they'll give you a cheaper price because they'll be like, hey, you didn't have to pay that many people. You did everything. <laughs> so he learned to just put different names, just make up names and put a bunch of stuff in there to make the movie look expensive so he could sell it for more. Um, like I said, Kickboxer it has some really beautiful sequences. The sequences in the temple uh, with the sunrise and the training sequences. But it also has that uh, sense of humor as well. You do drop a bunch of coconuts on his stomach and things like that. Um, the, the, uh, the illegal fights thing i've heard the rumors of these every five years there's a there was a kumite especially like in the 70s i heard elvis wanted to finance one of these things or fight in one of them that's why he got into the whole karate thing when he was doing that whole karate uh bruce mm-hmm. lee 
training thing. Um, but now you have actual Muay Thai. Um, how much did that research involve and how did you find Tong Po in that one? Or not Tong Po, but uh, yeah, Tong Po, the, the, the villain in, in Kickboxer. How did you find them? That, that happened to be uh, Jean-Claude's best friend. And Whoa. Uh, yes. And Michelle Kesey. And, you know, he was he was there on Bloodsport and Michelle was a great guy. They were they were best buddies in, in from Belgium. Hmm. Uh, and uh, and Jean, I remember Jean-Claude in, in Kickbox. He said he said, OK, Mark, he said, I have a surprise for you. I said, OK, because we're going to we, we wanted to look for the Tom Poe, you know, just like mm -hmm. with Bloodsport. You know, we find the find out Bolo Young for Kickbox. And he had makeup done on Michelle Kesey, you know, with the hairdo and the shaved head. And he said, how about him for Tom Poe? And I said, wow. I said, first of all, he is a fighter. OK. And he knows how to fight. They, him and Jean-Claude used to spar all the time. So uh, so we said, sure. You know, I you know, you know, one of the things that a lot of people stay away from. I love working with new talent and uh, when you see something and your gut and your gut says, yeah, that's going to work. Like, you know, like with Van Dam, uh, like with uh, Jeff Speakman and perfect weapon, uh, like with uh, Russell Carpenter, you know, I brought him in as a DP for several of my movies, you know, before he did a feature film and, mm -hmm. and he, he, he won the Academy award for Titanic. Uh, or in Death Warrant, it was David Goya's first script. You know, and it, not did. Demonic Toys? Because I always thought Demon Demonic Toys came later. Or you remember Demonic yeah. Toys? David Goya yeah, no. writ written that one as well. D David Goya, this was his first script that got made into a film. You know, again, it was new talent, but, you know, it read good. So, you know, I, David's I know. done pretty good, you know, uh, yeah. after that. So. Yeah, those, the, yeah. Dark Dark Knight did okay in the <laughs> theaters. It was, I, it was all right. Yeah. yeah the but, dark, but, that uh, whole Batman thing may have done okay for him. But it was like with Notorious Nick. I used a Cody Christian, you know, uh, and he was popular in TV series. But uh, he would always say nobody would give me a feature film because I never did one before. And that didn't, that didn't stop me because... Again, that's part of the, the confidence in, in, in making something that you feel is right. Go with it. Mm -hmm. Go with your gut. Go with your heart, whatever you want to call it. You know, And uh, if you think it's good, others will think it's good. So, Did, did you uh, have doubters? Did you have somebody who was like, Mark, don't do this. Don't do this movie. Oh, Please every, don't every, fight this guy. He's crazy. You're freaking crazy. Everybody that's, says that, you know, because that's my reenactment of the uh concrete block scene from Kickboxer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fight this guy, please. Yes, please. Right? Don't you know, fight there this are guy. people, you know, people in Bloodsport that come up to me all the time that said, I can recite every word to that movie. You are going I to go, make him walk again. Yeah, that I, whole thing. I, go, awesome. I, I made it and I can't, you know, but I'm just saying it's like uh, I love the fans for Bloodsport, you know. And oh, in fact, uh, we're working on a huge. working on a remake right now. So a remake of Bloodsport, yes, uh, or a sequel. A it's, a re it's a remake. Okay, yeah, that's all I can say about it right now. And but, that's on uh, Bloodsport because there have been several iterations of the kickbox. Like Kickboxer continued. You had a Sasha Mitchell sequel. Yes, you had a couple a you know, bunch of things coming up after Kickboxer, and then you started to get into the Kickboxer sequels. I think who are the directors on that I, one? I, I, I didn't. I always like. I never wanted to do sequels. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people paid me to do the sequels. There was some sequels done on Bloodsport. There was sequels done on, on Kickboxer. You know, it was not. It was always. I was always looking to create a new a new picture. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, I feel like with Bloodsport, I want to do a remake because there's so many incredible fans out there all over the world that I, I get I get letters, calls, e emails every day from people who just say. You know, when are you going to do another blood sport? You know, so I, I think it's it's something I want to do for the fans. So, and, so. But you you also have like I you there's good filmmakers who are making these movies. Like like John Stockwell has made some really beautiful films. Like he makes some of the surf movies, like Blue Crush, and he, I think he just did this Kickboxer Vengeance. Like these aren't bad filmmakers. You know what I mean? Like th these are these are pretty good. Um, action filmmakers who are taking on some of the reins of these films, mm -hmm. they just they're just sequels. So when we see mm -hmm. them, we 
we always just it's not the original you know what i mean um yeah. were there any like big regrets or are there any parts in your career because it always sounds like it seems like everything's just a party at this point uh were there any parts in your career where you're like well um i learned a lesson on that you know, without maybe naming names or the project. Yeah, uh, well, I think you learn on every every film you do. I mean, if you stop learning, then I, I think it's over, you know, but uh, I think there's always something new to learn. So I'm always open and I'm always open to collaborate with people. Uh, you know, oh, that's a good idea or ah, I don't think so. I mean, but it's always I am open to 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 input. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people are closed minded or they want to do it a certain way. That's OK. Every filmmaker is different. I mean, if you give the same script to 10 different directors, you're going to have 10 different films. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a per personal choices that you make in doing a film, which are thousands and thousands of choices from wardrobe to sets to to to, to everything, to scenes. Uh, so uh, it's a, it's all it's all a choice. So and hopefully all your choices or something that other people can enjoy. That's, I mean, that's how I look at it. When you saw the Van Damme, Frank Duke's relationship continue in like a film like The Quest, and supposedly that was a pretty, that's where their relationship became a little more testy. Uh, were, you, were you a witness to any of that? No. No, no. your relationship with both of them has always been pretty separate. Upsetting. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. Um, always separate and... Uh, I uh, consider them both, uh, you know, friends. We've worked together and we've done stuff together, and so uh, it's it's just separate. And they they remain separate. Like you, I know obviously you can't get into it, but as you continue with both of these franchises, you're involved in every new iteration, at least in a producerial or name credit uh, standpoint, correct? And and what and, and, and like what, a, like a, like you at least get a name you get a little bit of chunk of change every time they make a new blood sport or kickboxer movie don't you oh yeah 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 of course yes yes so you're a little yeah. bit involved are you involved creatively with any of the sequels uh, that you see you know not 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 for blood sport that happened but on the remake mm -hmm. absolutely I already have the you know I already have the creation uh, but uh, you know and and the kickboxer sequels no I was not part of. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, but they they certainly had to pay me every time to do that, you know. And uh, it was just a choice I made not to be involved, but to to work on new movies was my choice at that time. That's not a bad gig, though. You you know you make a little bit of of change, but you're freed up to continue pursuing. Like, I think it's things. great. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like uh, at one point it was like I was making more money not doing movies than doing movies. <laughs> <laughs> you're losing money doing. I I know that. Like I uh, my, my producer I just... and I talked talked today about we have this budget. <laughs> we we we're paying somebody to to line to itemize a budget for us to film, and we're talking on text like. Wait, are we splitting this? Or are you paying for this one? Or who's paying for this draft of the budget? <laughs> like, are we doing this or not? I'll demo you. Yeah, you making movies. People don't think that you. There's a lot of upfront costs before anybody agrees to pay for the movie. You make artwork, right. you make pre-production yes. material, and somebody maybe hasn't written a check yet. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely lose money trying to go your own way and, and film. Sure can, you know, you, but you also could create, you know, you know, there's very few situations where you can create an IP and an intellectual property by, by, by writing. I mean, my son just realized that now because, you know, he wrote his first script uh, and, and, and I, and at first I was going, oh, geez, I wonder what it's going to look like, you know, and I was pleasantly surprised that it, it the turned script out is really good. good. I said, yeah, I said, isn't that amazing that you can create an asset, you know, uh, like that? And uh, and then what that turns into and then, you know, sequels, remakes, prequels and all the things that can happen when you create something like that. It's uh, I think it's amazing. I always encourage writers, you know, write, write, write. And, uh, you know, you never know that you're going to get something that's very valuable. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So that anyway, that's that that's just something <laughs> uh, I think it's funny. In, in Geekscape, I know we're streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. If y'all have questions, like please leave them in the comments. Uh, I won't leave. I won't keep Mark too much longer. Okay. Um, but the whole point of having you here was to talk a little bit of filmmaking, talking a little bit about these two seminal films. Um, Death Warren, obviously, we haven't talked about that much, but that's the film where he's in prison. Uh, mm -hmm. I just remember the chains hanging down. That felt like that felt like that that Henry Dean Stanton film in the, or sequence in that very first Alien. 
Remember where everything's super dark and you just have the chains, the water, and the cat hissing at him? <laughs> That's That was the parallel I always got when I saw mm -hmm. a lot of the visual influence in, um, in Death Warrant. Were there other visual influences for things like, I, I feel like End of the Dragon in that whole island uh, tournament sequence uh, or the, the, the location had an influence on Kickboxer. Uh, where were you pulling some of your visual uh, influences when you were in the director's seat? You know, and a lot had to do with uh, when I was shown, like, you know, you mentioned where we shot you know, where, where all the statues, they were beheaded. And, and, that, and that was historical. No one was allowed to ever shoot on that land. I just happened to have a, a, a good friend, uh, Charles Wang, who's not with us anymore, but he owns Ceylon Films. Uh, and he, they were the Panavision agent for the Far East. And, uh, and he got me to go on this place that I was like, wow, this is incredible. You know, this is things you can't build. They're just beautiful. And uh, and I remember, you know, arriving there at like five o'clock in the morning because we wanted to get a sunrise shot, mm -hmm. you know, and it was so eerie. It was so eerie. You could like hear things. And and I remember talking to one of the locals and I was telling them about, well, you know, the uh, the ancient warriors like kind of talked in, in kickboxing. He said, how did you know? I go, what do you mean? How did I know? He said, yeah, that's what happens. I said, well, we just wrote it. We didn't uh, think it was true, but he was saying that 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 that's how they feel there. You know, so uh, so it, that's where that that was like a million dollar set that, that we didn't have to pay for. Uh, Incredible. You know? And that's and that's one of the things, uh, you know, with Kickbox, uh, I got 5000 extras that I didn't have to pay for because, OK, because my friend gave me a Rolls Royce to use. Okay. And, and when I was telling him, geez, I really need to get 5,000 people, but I can't afford them. And uh, <laughs> so he said, well, if you give the general, maybe uh, the Rolls Royce for the weekend, he'll give you his soldiers. And that's exactly the deal I made with the general. He gave me 5,000 of his soldiers to be the extras, you know, during the kickboxing matches. I mean, it's, uh, that's you know, incredible. So, and some of them have to dress up like that last yeah. kickboxing match. They're in like suits. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. You know, yes. And it, you know, it was, it was one of those things where you got to use your relationships. You got to use what you need to use, you know, to, to, to expand things. So it's funny how things work out, you know, like that, but the, that's those the are craziest interesting stories, right? Isn't that something? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we you have both. We got a question from Bold T over on Twitch, and he says, well, like, which actors today remind you of Van Damme and his prime? I'm like, I, I like a J Michael J. White or, um, you know, one of these uh, uh, martial artists. Like, uh, do those remind you of, of Van Damme? Like, he has a very specific type of charisma. Um, do you watch action films now? Oh, oh absolutely. Remember? You know which one I really enjoyed recently was The Ten Rings? Because mm -hmm. I thought the martial arts action in that was superb. You know, the bamboo was, sequence is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I love. I still love watching. I still, I still learn. You know, watching, uh, watching other fights and other films and the choreography that's to, that, that's available today is just uh, is just great. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna actually we're gonna blow people's minds uh, when we do the Bloodsport remake. It's gonna be, I think, probably the best that's ever been done. So that's how I'm approaching it. So, and if, with you, the, and, and yeah. if you don't believe in it, it's not going to happen, right? So you got to believe in it. You got to devote your heart and soul to it. And keeping your eyes open for, I'm guessing, unknowns again, because that's where you like, that's kind of like your thing is betting on unknowns and kind of trying to, because that way audiences don't walk in with preconceived notions, which I think can be detrimental true. to the story yes. you're going to tell. Right. It's right? true. It's true. So, uh, well, we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so I know. It's, uh, it's fun. To... <laughs> I, I, I Listen, if you can convince me as a kid that Dennis Alexio and Van Damme are brothers in any way, <laughs> like if you can pull that wool over my eyes, pal, he's like, mama and papa, they could not get along. They raised me in France. I was like, that's your razor thin explanation for why y'all could not have been different more I mean, listen you got to take a dna test pal i hate to tell you <laughs> <laughs> i hate to tell you guys uh, this dude's like a italian and he's got the jerry curls and everything right? and then band dance what is that about that's hilarious <laughs> Isn't that you funny? knew 
you knew when it. you were shooting it, you were like, oh boy, let's just let's just roll with it. Let's go, you know. But you went with it, right? And watching it. So oh we yeah, we just wanted to see people get, you know, kicked and this and that. We just wanted to see the flips, we just wanted to see all that action <laughs> going down. We loved it. Uh those movies are huge. Would you work with Chuck Claude Van Damme again? You no, know, sure, sure. I mean, uh, like I said, we uh we formed a, a good relationship many, many years ago, and uh, uh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I'm guessing some of these new blood for sport fighters might need a, a mentor. <laughs> I'm not getting anything out of you. I'm not even gonna try and get. I promised I wouldn't do a get you on that one. Uh, but when you, but I got to tell you, the, the influences on this from the, these films, when you have a movie that comes out in 1988, 1989, these two films. And then you see, and I'll—I mean—to take some of the the conversation towards video games, which for some of our video game fans on Geekscape, Street Fighter, the whole Street Fighter Two thing that happened in ninety one, ninety two, with the tournament style and the different fighters. When you watch Tong Po in Kickboxer, and then you see a character doing Muay Thai like with Saget, who was one of the villains in the kickboxer two film he was a villain in kickboxer one like or i'm mean, sorry in 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 street fighter what, like, what do you think when you start to see the influences from your film start to, to I, play I, out in I other love, media you want to hear the biggest influence that mm -hmm. may blow your mind you know so you know who the gracie brothers are right they're one of the, yeah. the originators yeah. of the ufc you know mixed yes. mark, mma if you heard of that right yeah i i quote the gracie school sometimes because and i quote it in filmmaking and teaching because i enjoy teaching I enjoy learning and I enjoy filmmaking And the Gracie uh, school has a plus even minus system where you should always be parallel to somebody for com mm -hmm. competition. You should always be aspiring towards somebody. So you should also be always be under somebody and then you should always be above somebody to bring them up. And they're, that's kind of how their school is built. And I think the same way with filmmaking, like I always think that I should have some level of mentorship. I should be competing against my peers or at least collaborating with them. And then I should always have students that I can bring up. Well, let me, let me, tell, yeah. let me tell you a story that happened when the, some of the Gracie brothers were at my house, you know, and I lived in, the, in, in LA and, and we were talking and they said, you know, Mark said the reason we created the UFC and the MMA was because of blood sport. You talk about an impact. And I said, where's my cut? <laughs> yeah, that's right. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it. but it's true. They said that was the that was when they saw Bloodsport, it gave them the idea to create the MMA and the UFC. So uh, you talk about an impact that film has. You know, uh, it's amazing sometimes. You know how a film can impact certain things, but that's probably one of the biggest. Now is you know the the that's MMA incredible. and the UFC is like you know multi billion dollar industry. You know, but it, it all started started from Bloodsport. The something? problem is those are two guys you can't exactly hang from their feet off of a bridge and shake the money out of. So, <laughs> like, okay, so like, yeah, they, they made yeah. a ton of money off of your influence. Uh, you, you can't you now listen. Like, if somebody had started like a video game tournament off of you, like maybe those pip squeaks you could have figured out how to get some money out of. But, geez, that's uh, but that's a, that that's something? a huge one. Yeah, so, yeah I mean, I it's an entire cultural league now. Like, it, yeah, it, that exactly. is massive. The fan base is crazy. I know. And I, I said, I love that. You know, the fact that I felt that I had something to do with that, you know, doesn't matter getting paid or not. I mean, it's just you at least that, get tickets for life. Exactly. You know, so anyway, <laughs> Free I just thought that shirts. was interesting. <laughs> it's incredible. Well, we got one last question from our good yeah, buddy good. Steven over on Facebook. He says, Mark, how did Kinsu end up with the role of Lynn in the film? Do you remember the actor Kin Sue? Okay. Which film? Yeah. He, yes, that, that was in Bloodsport. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was on the crew. And uh, and I remember that uh, the actor that we originally casted to play him, uh, he got hurt and uh, nothing to do with the film. And we had to replace him. And, you know, and we didn't have much time. And like I said, he was one of our crew members. And he said, you know, he raised his hand. I could do it. And, and we tested him out and we said, OK. Let's do it. You know, we'll try and add a little comic to it, and uh, and it worked. Like uh, he came, like put up your dukes. I mean, it was all mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, uh, it's one of those things that just happens, and and it works. So, yeah, I was. <laughs> I can't incredible. take too much credit. You know, 
That's pretty awesome. Okay, yeah. USA. And the you okay, USA? Oh, guy? Uh, story. Oh, okay, USA. That's that's a pretty famous line. Where did that come from? Oh my God! Yeah, no, that that was the actor himself. You know, when we said okay, when, <laughs> when we told him what the scene was about, and then he just did it on him. Okay, USA. You know, because I just <laughs> and you're I, like and, put that on film. And I got to tell you, oh yeah, that that's probably one of the. You know, that's like I'll be back. You know, mm -hmm. type of uh, <laughs> type of words. You know, from films. So uh, I, I love that. that that's has incredible. To be, that has to be in the remake. Uh, so. uh, you, you said you weren't going to give me spoilers. I'm sorry. You said you couldn't talk about it. You said there's still legal stuff that has to be settled. So yes, but that's uh, right. well, Mark. Yeah. When that remake comes out. I think we need to have you back on the show. Okay, sounds good. And, uh, and honestly, good I, I I didn't know you had the the film that came out um, last uh, in August. What was it called? It's called Notorious Nick. Notorious true Nick. Story. Geekscape yeah, is. If you're listening to this, and you should be listening to this, maybe on uh, Spotify or whatever podcast uh, app you use, uh, you should go check out Notorious Nick. It's yeah. uh it's at least on VOD. You can probably find it in a couple yes. different streaming spots. Yeah. And uh, and it's based on a true story. Does he play himself? I mean, it's hard no. to find. A no, I said that's why I said we. I used yeah. Cody Christian mm -hmm. uh, to play the lead, and uh, this is his first starring feature role wow. as well. So it, that never stops with me. And, and he's playing a one-armed fighter, MMA yes, fighter. Yes. You know, and I, and <laughs> I see. I, I remember Cody saying, "Oh, I really want to do this part." And I said, "Cody, how bad do you want to do this part?" He said, "I really want to do it bad." I said. Can you cut off one of your arms and make it yeah. a lot less expensive? Yeah, I was yeah. just kidding. So you but use anyway. a green you use a green screen sleeve. It's for a green a lot sleeve, of that. yes. Wow. Yes. Incredible. Yeah. But it came out very good. I mean Lionsgate was like very excited over the effects, how it looks. So, mm -hmm. you know, so anyway. That's it's, phenomenal. It's, good. it's a family film too. It's, okay. uh, it's something I think that everybody would enjoy. Notorious Nick. I love movies like that. I think Warrior the, was a great film, the one with Tom Hardy mm -hmm. and right. Joel Egerton. I, I think those films, even though I'm not even a fan of MMA and I'm a I'm a worm, I could get beat up by anybody. Um, <laughs> I still enjoy some of these films. Um, yeah. Notorious Nick, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on the uh, okay. on the watch list. There you go. Um, Geekscape is uh, hand of you know big hand of applause for uh, for Mark DeSalle for coming on the show. Uh, we'll you. get you back for the next film. Sounds um, great. You know, Geekscape's okay. been around for 15 years, so like we have got to get your your son making films. We will get him on the podcast. To there talk you go. Films, exactly. And we'll keep this whole thing going. Um, Geekscape is share Geekscape with your friends, whether it's the video feeds on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, or Twitter, or go ahead and hit share on your podcast app and share it with <laughs> your friends, and they can listen to it. As they go on a jog or drive, uh, Stephen Quill from Facebook says, thank you, Mark. Uh, and I got to say thank you to all of you out there. We've been around for 15 years. And again, Circle December 17th, we got a live show here in L.A. But that is after 15, 14 hours of live streaming. Oh. You're going to see it right here on the feed to benefit Big Brothers Big Sisters. Awesome. Uh, I can't wait. December 17th. Mark, thank you. And, Congrats um, on your 15 years. Time. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, uh, over and out, Geekscapers. Okay. Don't hate, create. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate, create. I like it. Thank you, sir. We'll All shoot right, you a care. shot.